Are we witnessing the dawn of the Stone Age for primates? Before we get into everything, I think it would be a very good idea to get an accurate definition of exactly what the Stone Age is. The Stone Age is a prehistoric period marked by the use of tools, more specifically tools made out of stone, but also wood, plant fibres, as well as any other strong material that would have been available to us at the time. It started roughly 3 million years ago and developed all the way through up until the start of the Bronze Age about 5,000 years ago. In this time, specifically stone tools went from these, which look like they were smashed against another rock by a mindless animal, to these carefully crafted, precise works of art. It's hard to see how and when our ancestors started this long technological journey, but with the miracles of modern technology and scientific practices, we can sort of see into the past. But this time, it's not in the archaeological record that we find this evidence. It's actually in some of our closest living relatives, primates. From cute little monkeys using stones to crack open nuts, to chimpanzees repeatedly stabbing the lifeless corpses of little animals. Join me as we explore tool use in modern primates, and see if they really have entered the Stone Age. Enjoy. This is the oldest known tool. Found in an excavation site in modern-day Kenya, this stone has changed our understanding of the development of tools in our history. See, this tool dates to 3.3 million years ago, making it older than any known human species. This means that this tool was made by another animal. This date overlaps with the time that Australopithecus afrinensis, aka Lucy, lived in the region. Although no stone tools have been directly linked with Australopithecines like Lucy, evidence like this strongly points towards it. And this shows that tool use in us humans probably started development a long time before we just magically spawned on the planet. This stone tool that was found in Kenya also shows signs of napping, which shows that whoever made it had an understanding of how to change a natural stone into an effective and precise tool. Explanation time for the people who don't know what napping is. Napping is when you get a big stone and then you get a smaller stone that you want to sharpen or make into some sort of hand axe or something like that. And then you just whack the big stone onto the smaller stone's edges, uh, eventually chipping away parts of the edge, creating a sharper surface and a more precise point in some cases. Throughout our development um, in our history, uh, there were different types of napping styles that eventually led on to very sharp and very um, well very well made stone tools but the old tools like older one tools and this tool that's in Kenya were a bit more rigid and a bit more erratic in that style that's what napping is now you know explanation over napping is something that comes along uh, after an already established uh, use of tools so that means that our ancestors must have been using tools long before this tool that was found in Kenya was made because surely we would have been using unmodified stones uh, instead of just jumping straight to napping and we've got to think about plant fibers that haven't preserved in the archaeological record as well as sticks and things like that so tool use goes back a lot lot further than we actually know in our um, family but unfortunately, without clear evidence such as napping or residue left on stones, we can't quite see what stones were used as tools. But not all is lost. Through the relentless research of some of our distant cousins, to put it lightly, we can actually almost see into the past and study how our ancestors first began using tools. This is a capuchin monkey, and he is using a stone to crack open a nut. This little guy is a clear expert. Some capuchin populations, particularly in Brazil, have been using stone to crack open nuts for about 3,000 years. And they're experts for selecting the right tool for the job. They prefer heavier stones for nuts cracking, and they even actively test stones by lifting them up and tapping them to determine their weight to see if it is the right tool for the job. They also choose stones for their durability, um, consistently opting for sturdier stones instead of ones that just crumble in your hands. 
The young capuchins learn this behaviour by watching and practising. They experiment with different techniques, such as how to hold the nut in place, um, and also how much force to slam down on the nut with. It can take several years for young capuchins to master this technique. They consistently practice, gradually improving their efficiency and precision. This indicates cultural transitioning, um, so the knowledge is passed through the generations. You can just picture some old capuchin master teaching the youth how to crack a nut open with a stone. Use the correct technique and the stone will do the work. I'm going to watch that back and I'm going to be so embarrassed. <laughs> Even though these stones aren't modified in any sort of way, it still allows the capuchins to access new sources of food. While capuchins do show remarkable use of tools, which is probably how our ancient, ancient ancestors use them, they're not quite in the Stone Age. But what they do show us is the transition period somewhere between using no tools and using uh, modified tools. So somewhere in between there uh, are capuchin monkeys. It's this transitional period that would eventually lead to the Stone Age. So although capuchin monkeys aren't quite there, they're definitely on the right track. So go on capuchin monkeys, keep trying harder, keep working hard, and eventually you will get there. Go on boys. It probably doesn't come to a surprise to you at all, but the most advanced tool makers, uh, apart from us of course, uh, belong to our very own family, great apes. Chimpanzees are arguably the most advanced tool makers out of today's non-human animals. Chimps have been documented to use sticks to stick into termite mounds, um, and the termites would then climb onto the stick and then the chimps would take it out and then lick the stick clean, uh, which is like some sort of disgusting bug lollipop. In the Congo, chimps have been seen to deliberately fray the end of the sticks. Uh, fraying is when you sort of like rub the end of um, some sort of fibrous material and then all the little strands come loose and start poking off into different directions, sort of like a paintbrush. And this design was more effective than just a normal stick. Chimps, like the capuchin monkeys, use stones on top of stone anvils, which are like just sort of a flat stone that you put something on, to crack open nuts. Unlike the capuchin monkeys, chimps have been known to carry tools over long distances to these nut cracking sites. Um, so this shows some sort of, you know, foresight, some planning. They're going to carry these tools over there because that's where they smash the nuts. And out and about in the jungle, we find some of these nut cracking sites and we find that they've been used for generations. These sites sort of echo early human archaeological sites because we find um, an accumulation of tools that have been carried from elsewhere and then sort of just left there after they've been used. But what's probably the most interesting tool that chimps use are wooden spears. Um, yes, chimps have been known to craft wooden spears and hunt another animal in the wild. To craft these spears, chimps will break off a tree branch about 75 centimeters long. They'll then snap off the little sticks to make it nice and smooth, um, and then they'll gnaw on the end of it to create a sort of tip. Chimps use these spears to hunt bush babies, uh, and for those of you who don't know, bush babies are these small little primates with these big eyes, and they like to sleep in hollow tree trunks during the day. So it's quite sad that chimps hunt them really. Uh, I don't know why they couldn't hunt a more ugly animal, but I mean, that's life I suppose. The chimps will find a tree cavity where the bush baby is sleeping. They'll then repeatedly stab into the hole with the stick, like they're on the streets of London, before injuring the poor helpless bush baby. This doesn't usually kill the bush baby, so the chimp will just grab it and then bite its neck open. This behavior is unique to the Fongoli chimpanzee community. In this community, spear hunting is more common amongst the females, with 61% of the 308 observations being females. This prevalence of female hunting challenges the typical male hunting patterns in other chimpanzee communities. It's nice to see the female chimps actually being given a chance to show their skills, um, and it's worked out for them, they've created some cool hunting spear. So well done to the females at the Fongoli chimpanzee community. You've done very well for yourself, and if I could give you a medal, I think I would. Um, but I think you'd probably try and rip my face off or something like that. These examples highlight the complexity of chimpanzee communities and show their ability to plan in advance, use tools for different tasks, uh, and also pass down knowledge through the generations. As the smartest non-human great ape, it probably comes to no surprise to you at all that orangutans have been known to use tools in the wild, although it is not as common as chimpanzees. 
In Borneo and Sumatra, orangutans have been observed to use sticks to pry out honey from hollow tree shells, as well as insects like ants and termites. Some orangutans also have been seen to modify sticks, like stripping the leaves off, for a more effective use. They've also been observed to use sticks to try and fish things out the water, like seeds that are floating on the surface, maybe moving them closer to them so they can scoop it out, um, and things like that. But what's most fascinating about orangutans is that they use tools not only for food, but for other things as well. They've been known to use leaves as like protective gloves to pick up fruits, which is mad. They also use large leaves to shield themselves from rain, which I think is so cool. Orangutans in Borneo have been observed to chew uh, the leaves of a plant um, to create like a sort of foamy lather and then putting it all over their joints and their skin. The plant has medicinal properties, which is a sort of natural pain relief. It's specifically observed in females more often than not, and uh, some researchers think that's because that the females are carrying their young around in the canopies for a very long time, and their joints and their skin, their arms and that, they get quite sore. So they're chewing on this, this plant, and then they're rubbing it all on, on, on their skin and their joints to, to, to make them feel a bit better. When compared to chimpanzees, orangutans use tools less frequently, and that's because they like to live up in the trees instead of on the ground, and they also like to chill on their own, which is very relatable, so go on orangutans. So if anyone's going to be entering the Stone Age, it's going to be the chimpanzees. So without further ado, are the chimpanzees entering the Stone Age? No. Like we covered earlier in the video, the Stone Age in humans is characterized by the constant development and creation of tools that are integral to our social dynamic and our survival. More often than not, humans opted to use stone tools for a variety of tasks instead of using the body that Mother Nature blessed us with. So although chimps do use tools for a variety of tasks, demonstrate a generational transmission of knowledge, and also show foresight and planning when using tools, they don't consistently modify all their tools, specifically the stone ones, beyond picking them for their size and shape. They also opt to use their body more often than not to complete tasks that early humans would have opted to use tools for. But we do know that great apes are capable of modifying tools and even stone tools. While gorillas in captivity were busy sat on their ass watching Sky TV, bonobos were busy napping stone tools. The bonobos were taught how to nap tools by us humans, and then they would use them to hit open logs uh, or dig holes in order to obtain food. Although this ability was taught, they were able to independently reproduce these nap tools, meaning that they were able to understand and learn from someone else, and also understand how to replicate that activity on their own. This shows that bonobos possess the fine motor skills and intelligence to not only strike the stones together, but also learn how to do it through the generations. So all we need now are bonobos in the wild, napping stone tools and doing it frequently. So go on bonobos, you've got this. You're so close to the stone age, you keep going. So there you have it. That is my video on tool use among other great apes and if they've entered the stone age or not. Unfortunately, sorry to disappoint you all, they haven't, but we're not that far away um, and maybe with more uh, research on chimpanzees and bonobos in the wild because they seem to be the closest to it, um, maybe they already have entered the Stone Age. Maybe there's some populations that we don't know about that have an established cultural use of stone tools. Um, so we'll see. But in the meantime, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and also leave a comment below about your thoughts on these great apes and if they've entered the Stone Age or not. Um, yeah, but have a good one.